on screen. Today, I acknowledge that the town of Bruderheim is located on the Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta. The town of Bruderheim honors the first peoples of this land. We recognize that we stand upon land that carries the footsteps of Cree, Métis, Blackfoot, amongst other nations who have been here for thousands of years. Therefore, the town of Bruderheim has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier relationships with first peoples and further the calls to action as outlined by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you for that, Councillor Wayne. So um, next up is additions, deletions, changes to the agenda. Is there any? Mr. Mayor, nothing from administration. Is there anything from council they'd like to see changed on the agenda or deleted? <laughs> okay, um, we need a motion to adopt the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Judy. Uh, I make a motion we adopt the minutes as presented of November 17th. No. No, I have a December 1st agenda. Sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we're, we're jumping the on it's uh, adopt the agenda. Yes, adopt the agenda of December 1st. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks. Um, does anyone have any concerns with adopting the agenda as presented? Okay, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion to adopt the agenda? Hearing none, the motion's carried. Now we can do the motion for adopting the minutes of November 17th. Would someone be willing to make that motion? Councillor Ashley. I motion to accept the, the minutes from the November 17th uh, regular meeting of council. Thank you for that motion, Ashley. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion from council? Everyone's had a chance to read the minutes. Okay, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion for adopting the minutes of November 17th? And the motion's carried. Now we can move on to council priorities. 7.1 information request. We'll start over with Councillor George. Any information requests, Councillor George? Yes, I'd like to know if there's been any follow up with the uh, uh, parking situation with uh, deliveries on uh, Main Street, especially on the intersection of Queen and 50, 48th Avenue. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, we have talked to the businesses, so we are monitoring. If something ain't done there, then we're going to end up with a serious accident. Okay, uh, thank you for that, Councillor George. Anything else? Okay, uh, Councillor Ashley? Not at this time. Councillor Wayne? Not at this time. Councillor Lynn? Well, I got two, two items. First is a Saturday is a seniors pancake breakfast and it starts at nine o'clock, I think, on to 11, 11.30. So it'd be a good thing to attend. And then I attend, attended a Northern Lights uh, library meeting and it was quite entertaining and informative. At this time, they don't see any increase in their per capita levy, but they are running in the future could, because they're running on a bit of a deficit, but they're using their uh, uh, reserves at this time to manage it. But in the future, there could be possible a uh, hike. That's it. Thank you. That's all I have to report. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. Councillor Dino? Not at this time. Thank you. Any information requests, Deputy Mayor? I was wondering if somewhere along the winter, when things get colder and we get lots of snow, was it a possibility that we could get a, maybe a sled hill for the younger generation out there? Pile some of our snow up and do something like that? Um, I ended up seeing one in the city and it was quite cute. It was only six feet high, but it went all the way to the front of the lot. It was in the back of the yard, all the way to the front of the house. So just something small. They even had steps in it and everything. It's like quite neat. Anyhow, if Dennis has lots of snow or something, that would be appreciated. Thanks, Mr. Sir. Mayor, if I could address through Deputy Mayor, um, there's a liability issue with Toboggan Hills. So um, I know we looked into enhancing the one at over by the school, that large hill. Um, so there's conditions around it, but I will definitely check and see what that exactly is. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know we can't enhance that one over by the school. It's too big. The ones in the city are 
Um, I mean, there's ones right by the kids' house and they're natural, right? And they're really only six, seven feet. They're not long, right? It's just enough to get them to roll down and get outside and play, right? But yeah, thanks. Thanks to that, Councillor Drudy. Any other information requests from Council? We do have one information request. Um, I know the Indigenous training that was uh, recently put on by the town was very well received and was well worthwhile. I'm just wondering that uh, <clears throat> question. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of other municipalities that took part in it. Did they help with the cost of that? Like who footed the bill for this? Mr. Mayor, the town of Bruderheim paid for it. Okay, thank you. Is that part of the training budget or? Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Okay, so there was town staff present then. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, so the next is program requests, and we'll start with Deputy Mayor Judy. Mr. Mayor, if I could just add to that too. Um, okay. When we send our staff to training for that, it was we looked at it was three four hundred dollars per person, at minimum to send for training. So as soon as you have five people, it's cheaper to bring in. So we just opened it up to our neighbors as well, and our neighbors did pay for lunch. They each paid twenty dollars to cover those costs. So that's why we made the decision to do that. Just clarity. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Judy, did you have any program requests? Uh, nothing at this time, thanks. Thanks. Um, Councillor Dana? Nothing at this minute, time. Thank you. Councillor Len? Nothing at this time. Councillor Wayne? Nothing at this time. Councillor Ashley? Nothing at this time. And Councillor George, any program requests? Has there uh, been any uh, follow-up uh, with the RCMP uh, as far as um, the crime uh, prevention or anything like that? So um, the RCMP are actually coming to council in January, the first week, and they will be providing um, more detailed report about murder rate, as well as talk about statistics and murder rate. Mr. Mayor, if I could just repeat that. Um, Sherry was uh, saying that uh, in January, our uh, detachment commander will be coming here to provide either virtually or in-person statistics on Bruderheim. Thank you for Thank that. You. Anything else, Councillor George? Nothing at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving along then, the request for decisions, 8.1 bylaw 12-2021, Youth Advisory Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration like to seek second and third reading to bylaw 12 2021 to establish a youth advisory committee. The town council gives second reading to bylaw 12 2021, a bylaw for the establishment of a youth advisory committee. The town council give third reading to bylaw 12 2021, a uh, bylaw for the establishment of a youth advisory committee. Council has received feedback that residents want more activities for youth and young families in their community. Previously, the Recreation and Culture Board tried to engage youth in planning their events and recreation opportunities with limited success. On November 17, 2021, Town Council gave first reading to bylaw 12 2021, a bylaw for the establishment of a youth advisory committee. Strategic plans areas, so sustainable and balanced economy, foster collaboration with regional community and government partnerships, healthy, vibrant community, safety, health, and welfare of people in our community, provide opportunities for public engagement and communication with youth, open and transparent governance and administration. The community is educated on responsibilities and limitation of council and administration. Summary, this bylaw sets out the parameters in terms of a broad mandate and actions. It also details membership, quorum, voting, appointments, term limits, and other procedures. This bylaw provides an opportunity to review what exists for recreation opportunities in Bruderheim and surrounding communities and to gather information from one from our youth and what they would like to see going forward. This advisory group would look at collaborative opportunities that may exist for attending or sharing recreation available in our community and other communities adjacent to us. For example, Lamont, Elk Island Park, Fort Saskatchewan, Strathcona County, Mandera, Andrew and Chipman. The youth center is established in the Carol Mushmer Arena and this group may lead activities at the center and gather information from members of the community to share with council. Upon third reading of the bylaw, administration will start the process of advertising opportunity to be on the advisory committee for council and take youth applications. This committee will be activated in January 22, 2022, and a council representative will be determined at that time. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. So we're looking for a motion to approve the second reading of this bylaw. Councillor George. 
I make a motion that Town Council give second reading to bylaw 12 2021, a bylaw for the establishment of a youth advisory committee as presented. Thank you for that motion, Councillor George. Any comments, questions, or concerns with the motion on the second reading of this bylaw? Councillor Wayne? There is discussion in regards to the age on there. Um, was that altered at all in here, or is this? So, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, that was an excellent question that was brought to administration, and we did some research. And uh, most uh, youth centers and youth groups uh, said that uh, people tend to use it as a drop off for daycare if you go younger, as well as disruptive to the older youth that are actually like the thought was we're going to actually like make a little board and a secretary and a treasurer to provide an opportunity. But what they say is um, if your older siblings are or something, um, the younger youth are more than welcome to come or if they're going to engage as youth, the parents would come with if they're under age. Um, so that is the industry best practice for youth committees is that age. So a 12 year old can go with their 15 year old sibling, is that? Yeah, that's the best practice. And I think what I would do is uh, go to the first meeting. Uh, hopefully we get volunteers and try to establish like a board type atmosphere and do a little, cause you know, as you know, in grade six, they learn about governance and boards uh, in the curriculum. And so just kind of maybe I was thinking even bring a teacher in that does that and just kind of, you know, talk a little bit about that to them. And then um, the board can decide, you know, maybe every second time they meet or third time, they're going to bring in the six to 12 crowd or 14 crowd, and they have to be accompanied by a responsible person. They can establish what that's going to be. Um, again, nothing's written in stone. Um, I'm really hoping that we're going to teach them how to write their own set of bylaws and right, and they will govern and we might bring the youth advisory bylaw back for revision once we talk to the youth and maybe we'll lower it to 12. Like, it's hard to say, right? Okay, well, that's awesome. Again, it's a pilot. We're just coming out of the gate and we just did a survey of the region and best practices. So, okay, well, that's awesome. Thank you for that. The other thing is, is this something that we could bring to the school, to the grade six class, and see if this is something they can head off? Yeah, I was hoping that um, some of the over 20 crowd that uh, seem to be engaging with our youth uh, through disc golf and other activities in town at the skate park, um, maybe we can engage them to assist with that. Just they tend to have a better connection with the youth than us old folk. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that question, Councilor Wayne. Uh, uh, Wayne, uh, uh, was uh, my question, has anything changed on the bylaw from the last? Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's the only item that we sort of flagged was the H. Again, this is just a pilot, and uh, I would suspect we would be bringing this bylaw back to you once our youth has an opportunity to review it and talk about their makeup. And maybe they don't want it to be that formal. Maybe they want us to run the meetings and, right, I just kind of want to see what, what they're thinking as well. Yeah, that's what I was worried about if we were putting the cart before the horse. Um, there was talk about honorarium. That's not in this bylaw, is it? No, Mr. Mayor. That's in the operating budget. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? From so just for clarity, yep. that would be to supervise youth in the youth center and to supervise outdoor sports in the summer. Uh, we would provide keys for certain things and it would be an honorarium that they would be facilitating those activities. Thank you. Any other questions from council for the second reading? The, the only other question that I had was, did we have any uptake from any uh, youth asking about this at all? No, no Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. So if there's no more questions, I'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion for the second reading? Hearing none, then the motion's carried. And so we're looking for a motion from council for the third reading. Councillor Wayne? The town council give third reading to bylaw 12-2021 establishment of youth advisory committee. Thank you for that. Any comments, questions, or concerns on the motion for the third reading? Mr. Mayor, if I could just add another comment. Um, in my research, I also found out that, um, you know, across Canada, we're seeing that youth and young um, people aren't getting involved on the volunteer basis like they used to in the community. And so this is when you asked about why so formal with boards and decision making and motions, we just thought this would be a great opportunity to, to show them what volunteer is and what to be on a board and what the expectations. So kind of a feeder into uh, joining a nonprofit in their community, that would be part of our focus as well. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wayne. I was just gonna say it also shows some accountability for these people that they're 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 on a board, they you know, they're in charge of this. And if it just I think it it um 
just puts a better picture or better uh, background for it, I guess, to hold accountability of these kids when they join a board like this and um, and have control on it. So, yeah, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> to uh, help give exposure to the youth that may or may not have heard of this, are we going to advertise to um, the schools at junior high level as well, where program kids are going to? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think Councillor Campbell has a question as well. Oh, Councillor George. Uh, this um, board, could, could it not be uh, structured around the sim uh, similarities of uh, the uh, student union? Where they have uh, a whole governance board, starting with the president, secretary, and all that. Um, that uh, I know when I was in high school and uh, junior high, it was a very effective representation of our school and our students. And uh, they had their meetings and they brought their concerns and stuff to the to the teachers or and to the students. I just uh, thought of that it might be a way of structuring it. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. I kind of foresee administration playing a pretty large role for the first year and then slowly stepping away. Yeah. Thanks for that, Councillor George. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from Council? Okay, we'll call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion for the third reading of the Youth Advisory Committee motion? Haven't heard none. Motion's carried. And we're on to quarterly management report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to provide Council with the Town of Ritterheim's second quarter management report. Sorry, my Mr. Mayor's third quarter management report, which includes a financial status report as of September 30th, 2021 for information. That the September 30th, 2021 Town of Bruderheim third quarter management report be received for information. The Town of Bruderheim 2021 third quarter management report in, attached provides the operating results for the period compared to the approved budget known as the operating variance. December 16, 2020, Council approved the 2021 capital and interim operating budgets. On August 18, 2021, Council accepted the quarter two report as information. Legislative Legal Impacts, Municipal Government Act, RSA 2000, Chapter M26, Section 268.1b. The actual revenues and expenditures in the municipality compared with the estimates in the operating and capital budget approved by Council are reported to Council as often as Council directs. Administration reviewed the financial results, results as of September 30th as providing council with a status report. Operations are on track with the following summary. Revenue amounts of $2,943,916. Expenses of $2,242,362. Proof capital projects totaled $181,300 and the projects that have been, been paid to September 30th totaled 312,778, which includes 155,842 from 2020 capital for with the water reservoir study with a 2021 budget remaining of 24,383. The town's reserve balances of September 30th is $963,463. The town's bank account balance as of September 30th is $1,813,802. The town's line of credit account is in the amount of $350,000, has a zero balance owing. Long-term debt debentures are held on a wheel loader, fire hall, and the 2017 street improvement program. Total repayment in 2021 is $102,870. The quarterly management report will be published on the town of Bruderheim website. And Mr. Mayor, um, the deputy mayor pointed out administrative error. If I could direct counsel to the... Um, income statement, um, wages should have read $567,525. Uh, income statement, it's got a blue header in the package. Did everybody find that? Instead of 155,664, it should read 567,525. We'll be sending out the uh, updated income statement for council. And contract management is $449,930. Okay, 
Thank you for that correction. Thank you. Any other um, preamble for this, uh, Pat? That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any questions on the third quarter management report from council? Councilor Judy, or Deputy Mayor Judy. So you said you'll be sending us out an updated one when you get those figures back. So I don't have to add it up and figure it out if it's right or wrong. Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, we'll send that out tomorrow. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> CEO Pat, just for the sake of our audience and anyone who um, may not uh, be aware, the uh, income statement where it shows revenue expenses and net income loss, where it's showing a negative 701, maybe just uh, highlight how you derive that partway through the year. I believe our direct, oh, I see she's not on the director of finance. Um, Mr. Mayor, so that's the, uh, Right now that our, our uh, revenue has exceeded our expenses, so an operating budget um, is the revenue expenses have to zero out. And so at this time, we still have not, of course, spent all our money that is projected till the end of 2021. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from council with the quarterly report? Okay, we'll be looking for a motion to accept it as information then. Please, somebody who would they be willing to make, Councillor George? I make a motion that um, that the September 30th, 2021 Town of Bruderheim third quarter management report be received for information as presented. Thank you, Councillor George. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? And make sure everybody's digested that information. Okay, hearing no comments, questions, or concerns, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion for the quarterly report? And the motion's carried. So now we can move on to bylaw 13 2021. It's 8.3 on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to prevent, present the 2022 user fees and charges to council for consideration. The town council give first reading to bylaw 13, 2021, a bylaw to impose the user fee and charges for 2022. The town provides a number of services to the residents of Greerheim in an effort to enhance their quality of life. The fees of these services are established in the user fees and charges bylaw and are updated annually to reflect increases in town costs while still providing a level of service at a fair and reasonable rate to residents. Strategic plan areas, the user fees and charges bylaw ensures that not only the residents of the town, but customers of the town are also contributing to the cost to provide town services. Sustainable infrastructure, continue to develop and plan the needs of the community, healthy, vibrant community, continue to enhance and create new relationships with service groups by offering reduced rates for town services to nonprofit organizations. Open and transparent governance administration, ensure that the community is aware of the fees and charges for services offered by the town. Other impacts, MGA Chapter M26, Section 8, Powers Under Bylaws, allows councils to pounce a bylaw for the establishment and collection of fees for services provided by the town. This past year, administration continued to focus on reviewing our policies, bylaws, and our website. 2021 saw a significant rewrite of our user fees and charges, as it was confusing and bringing interpreted different and being interpreted differently by those viewing the information. The user fees and charges schedule A was revamped in 2021 to align the charges with department that they relate to, to clarify for staff, residents and potential development. We've been documenting throughout 2021 issues that have arose from the rewrite and the 2022 user fees and charges reflect those identified issues. One of the significant changes is removal of local and non-local rates on our ICE rental rates. Our community has seen the growth of our service borders in the past five years, and we are supported by the people living within those growth areas. Our local minor sports association has partnered with another community to continue to provide opportunities for our youth. With this formal merger scheduled to happen in 2022, how will we define local and non-local in the fee schedule when the proposed name of the team won't be Bruderheim? Our adult teams have members from all over the region and to determine who qualifies as local and non-local is not a feasible task to ask of administration. 
Typically, the same user groups have been using our ice over the last five years, and they all support local initiatives in our municipal boundaries. The economic benefit of adult teams playing in our community is greatly appreciated by local business. In 2021, the utility fee schedule saw a significant rewrite, and we advised council that it would take a few years to calculate the exact rates to account for expenses. The water rates that were established are projected to be very close to balancing revenues and expenses. Unfortunately, the sewer expenses are projected to be approximately 68,000 over the sewer revenue. The short follow me made up the second significant change to user fees and charges for 2022. The proposed sewer flat rate increase of $4 per household per month will bring the revenue closer to the actual expenses of providing sewer services to the community. We are projecting another increase to sewer rates in 2023 based on the 2021 water consumption rates. The fees and charges will come into effect on January 1st, 2022. Upon final reading, the bylaw will be placed on the town website and advertised on social media. And Mr. Mayor, if council would like, we could go through the changes or did council just, are they good with just asking questions or what would they prefer? Um, what does council prefer? I, I know that on the printouts, the yellow highlights of what's changed does, does, doesn't show up and it doesn't show if it's going up or going down. Um, so it'd be like, for example, the, Minor users is now 110. What was it before? Um, Mr. Mayor, so, so uh, I just highlighting that one and looking at council to see if they want to go through the changes or, or not. So just please speak up. Mr. Mayor provided a spreadsheet reason for change. Those, did you all read that as well? I can go through that one if that works better. That's probably a good idea. Okay. So, okay, council. Yep. Just the Coles notes. Hmm. I don't know why it's not getting bigger, sorry. Let's see if Dennis can see that. An alternative. Oh, he said he can see it. He okay. can see it. Okay, good. Oh, I know why. Because this, I have to move this. Sorry, thank you. Okay. So the first uh, change on the 2021 to the 20 increase from 2020. So it's a decrease reproduction prior um, for assessment. Um, so we're lowering that to five dollars from 1050. So administration actually have been tracking time on certain activities that we do in the office. And so we're trying to get those costs. Um, so to reproduce your prior year's tax assessment, not this year's assessment, but prior years. So like people will come in their own businesses. Can you print the last 17 years I'm being audited? That sort of question we get. So there has to be a charge for those sort of services. Um, Again, uh, this is a new item, tax account histories. Uh, so a lot of times we'll have realtors, lawyers, those sort of professional services asking for um, a history of the tax, the taxes on that property. Mr. George, you have a question? Can you tell me what the differentiation, differentiation is between uh, the uh, reproduction and the history. Uh, if you're charging 50 for one and five for another, it doesn't make sense. So Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, uh, the $5 is I just look up your roll number and hit print. Tax account history, we actually have to go back into the archives and it's a little bit more and administrative. Back would you have to go? Depending on the question, right? So these are regional standard costs. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a little more in depth and there's an actual document that has to be produced. I sign it, it goes through a little bit bigger of a process, more like a planning and development process, right? Okay. Thank it's you. more of a legal document as opposed to just hitting print. Uh, and again, these are all new, um, new industry standards, best practices. Um, so now we used to just have a cost to uh, start a tax recovery. So this is when um, a taxpayer decides they aren't able to pay their taxes for three years and then we register for auction. And so there's a legal process. 
And so this is the new industry standard on breaking it up so that at any point, instead of just charging $1,000 up front, at any point, if the taxpayer comes in and pays, then they're only paying as the process proceeds, right? Which is, makes more sense. So again, um, this whole part of assessment tax is new because it just breaks it out. We used to charge just one flat fee for the whole process. That's your Wayne. The assessment appeal fees, is that for like, if somebody wanted a reassessment or is that if you're actually appealing what is being assessed? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, that's correct. If you're actually appealing the assessment and those are tied to um, our contract service, which is Strathcona County, it has to be the same. And we move subdivision and development appeal board over to planning and development instead of in the uh, assessment and tax. Um, this is new. We just put no charge for commissioner of OS. Um, it's a service. I don't know if you know, but there's four of us that are commissioner of OS, and there's no charge for us to maintain that status as long as we're doing it for municipal work. So I couldn't do it for personal. Um, commissioner of OS typically charge $50. Um, to provide that service, but as municipal, we're allowed to uh, provide that service for free. So we just best practice is to put that right in the fees and charges. So council's aware we're not charging for that service. <clears throat> and I have to say the last two years we've been busy with that service. So that's why it came up to mind with everybody doing everything virtually now. <laughs> they come to the office, print it out, sign it. We watch them sign it, we commission it, and then they scan it back. So. Um, Elk Island Public Schools asked us to break out the grass cutting mowing as opposed to weed whipping instead of a, we used to just do an acre uh, charge and they asked to go by hour and to break out um, the handwork from the equipment work. So that was a request on them. Okay. Um, is that like uh, based on some industry standard for grass mowing? What's interesting is Elk Island Public Schools, almost every contract's different. So um, this is what they've been negotiating with um, a contract, our new contract. So we actually have no problem with that breaking out. It actually, um, Mr. Thomas Schatz said it's easier to track than a one-time minimum. Sometimes it takes longer, less. It's just easier to track. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wayne? Would this include, would be the same cost to do um, on site lease? So would that be, or is that a different cost? Mr. Mayor, we contract that service out. But yes, if there was an emergency for some reason, yes, it still can be applied to anybody. It's not just Elk Island Public Schools. Um, $10 for a fire permit, just for the administrative costs again. Uh, Councilor George, please use your mic. That fire permit, is that uh, annual or is that continual? Once you've got one, it's good for as long as you're... So Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, it's one time unless something changes with your fire pit. Then it has to be reinspected by our fire chief. Thank you. Uh, again, we've been tracking a min time to perform tasks in the office to try to get a better um, look at how we spend our time. So the utility account application is going from 26 to $30. Um, and again, we're lowering the utility bill reprint uh, from $10 to $5. Again, that's just a matter of looking up the person's roll number and hitting print. So um, utility fees, we used to have them water meter size. It was an old reference um, to the old type water meters. So we just removed that reference. I think it said 100, 200, 300, 400 series. That doesn't reflect the type of meters we've now installed in town. So just an administrative cleanup. Okay, um, just a question on water meters, the new ones that are installed, what happens when they need service? Oh, it's still in there. We just re removed that, like instead of saying five, it's used to say 100 series, five eighths meter. Now it just says five eighths meter. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's not a descriptive, it's old fashioned descriptive. Um, sewer rates, fixed rate. Again, uh, mentioned that in my opening comments. Uh, increasing a flat rate, uh, $3.60 $3 to $7.60. And again, this is with the projected loss this year of $68,000 uh, to our sewer um, income and our revenue and expenses. 
Councilor George, you had your hand up. Um, just a reminder for council, um, maybe try to stay a little closer to the mic for the sake of the folks listening online that might not be able to hear you. That is a, a fixed rate, not a consumption rate, right? Mr. Mayor, through Councilor Campbell, that's correct. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Councilor George. Okay, nothing else. Um, Again, uh, so one thing we noticed is that we passed the fees and charges uh, in December, and then in April, we get a rate increase on our utility um, provider, GFL, there, and their uh, year end is April. And so we're working with them. So already since April, we've been paying more than the residents have been paying. So because we don't do a rate increase once the fees and charges are passed, but in April, there's an increase, and we never know that increase till April. So um, these rates are just the... Uh, Consumer price index increase, and there's one every year, roughly three to 5% um, on our cart rental charges. So those are passed on directly to the residents. Councillor George. Did they give you a reason why these, um, why these containers are costing so much? Uh, is it due to replacement or is it due to service or? So Mr. Mayor, Council Campbell, I would say fuel is a huge part of it. Insurance, like we don't get charged like a pickup rate or anything, like everything's included in the cart cost. So I would imagine that all of those costs uh, seem quite reasonable if they're looking at three to 5% per year. The average uh, CPI has been anywhere from three to 8% across the province in the last five years. So I think they're fully within their best guess. Thank you. Uh, recycling. I just wanted to remind council that seniors pay $1.68 and we are charged $4.06, which is a reduced rate. So GFL is already giving us a reduced rate uh, from seniors. So there is one flaw in the plan when the senior sells to somebody under 65, uh, sometimes that gets through the system. So, um, cause the accounts just get transferred over. So we're putting in a uh, kind of a, make sure you're that they're over 65 to still get that rate. So, um, but we are subsidizing $3, almost $3 a month. Um, for seniors for, and that was a council motion and council can't change that on fees and charges. We'd have to do rescind of that motion. So, and again, the recycling, that's just your 3% increase. Deputy Mayor Judy has a question. So is that the bins or your charge for, for, the, for the recycling and the bins in that one? I'm not sure I understand the question, Mr. Mercer. So recycling, um, it's they're charging you for the bin and for picking it up each week. Like, and I guess my question was last time was if we take away the bags or just leave the bags and take away the bins, would we save anything? So Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, we did uh, call and if we were to switch to blue bag program, it would lower the bin cost by $2 a month. So not much of a savings. I think most resident, residents would pay more than $2 a month for bags. I know that I do, so <laughs> blue bags. Um, one of the few municipalities that still has bins though, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I recall uh, administration reached out to the residents to find out yeah. if they wanted the, to keep the bins and that, that was maybe two years ago. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, like we that. signed the new contract almost three years ago now, but yeah. yeah. And uh, the residents were in favor of keeping them at that time, right? Yeah, Public Works you. is also in favor. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not a fan <laughs> of the uh, the wind blowing and then the bag leaves the county kind of thing that makes a mess. You know. Yeah, the cats is another thing with uh, waste, yeah. Uh, and again, uh, administration's been uh, tracking time to do services and we're lowering the administrative fee for a disconnect notice uh, from 50 to $25. Councillor George. You have a disconnect notice of arrears from 25 to 50, and then the administration fee for disconnect due to late payment from 50 to 25. Wouldn't it make more sense if you left it at 50? 
So and this is supposed to be sort of a deterrent. So Mr. Mayor, the it's more work for the disconnection notice actually of the rears issued. There's more of the process, the procedure is a lot more lengthy. And so we just flip them around because um, again, we're tracking time and it takes more administrative time to do the disconnection notice and then the actual late payment notice. But what about the total disconnect? Well, this is the process for a total disconnect. So there's three steps to do total disconnect, right? So again, it's split out and administration um, said that it takes a lot more work for the initial disconnection notice. So you got the notice, the disconnect, and then the notice. 48 hour notice, and then the actual disconnect. And that's in coming up, there's an actual charge for the disconnect. And yeah, then these the are just admin costs. Here. These are administration costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Public works is way more expensive. Any questions on any of that? Everybody's okay. Um, facilities. So this is where we change from minor um, users. We actually um, combine the two and we're still on the low side, um, but that does match Lamont. So the uh, local non um, local nonprofit youth um, that is a considerable increase and still below regional by a lot. So we felt that I believe they were paying eighty eight dollars presently. Is that right? Sure, eighty eight dollars. And uh, so that already is a twenty two dollars an hour increase. Um, so we felt that was enough of an increase, but we'd probably be looking at an increase in twenty twenty three. Councillor Ashi. For the um, hockey groups that are already using it, is that going to affect what they pay come January or are they locked in for what yep. they signed on for? So they'll continue to pay that until the fall of 2022? So Mr. Mayor, in the fees and charges through Councillor Carter, um, you'll notice that on the right-hand column, it says it comes into effect in April. And not on this one, but on the actual bylaw. And that is a really great question. Yeah, it's a contract we've already signed. So we don't increase ICE rental rates till about April usually. Thanks for the question, Councillor Wayne. So any, <clears throat> any youth team that comes to use the arena is now $110, regardless of where they're from? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, correct. Is that because of the merger that's happening between the associations? Is that to differentiate? Well, that was one of the driving forces. The other is, again, I think I've asked council this number of times, what is community? What is what is our community? And it is quite the trend that community resides within out, outside of our municipal borders. So typically the only two communities that use our rink are Fort Saskatchewan and uh, Lamont, Bruderheim. So those communities generally, well, they do support uh, so, and minor is the word now, not um, youth. And youth is actually um, that crossover team. So like the 16 to 20 year olds, but we don't have that. And so what we went with by was the last five years of our rental people and who typically uses our ice. And we felt quite comfortable just dividing it. Also, you notice there's no tournament prices. I'm not sure in the fees and charges why that was there because it was exactly the same price. So we just simplified the contracts um, and these are the costs. And adult and minor are considerably lower than the regional average. What was um, non-local rates prior to, do you remember? Um, is it in the bylaw? It should be. Oh, I got it. Okay. It's just one. Okay. I guess because know that the um, adult users uh, local rate was 127. So the, um, yeah, I don't have the 2021. I have to get that back to you, but um, the adult teams absolutely cannot figure that out. We've had complaints from adult teams that are saying that other team is getting local, we're getting non-local, we actually have more local, we actually, so if they have a Bruderheim mailing address, 
that's a farm, could be a farm, could be a town. Like there's no way administration has the resources to start checking if people are local or non-local on the adult. And again, the minor, the only people that use our rink are Fort Saskatchewan, the and Bruderheim, so. Yeah, I guess my, my um, there's still a, a local team that's Bruderheim and Lamont is emerging and they're, they're identifying with a new name as of next year. Why wouldn't they stay as a local and but our rate is exactly the same as Lamont's 110. That's why we picked that rate. So it would stay the same. That's their local. Okay. No, I understand rate. that. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is why is, would other outside teams pay the same price? Well, the only other outside teams we have is City for Saskatchewan. And as you know, they support us in other ways. So. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. So will this, will this be, sorry, will this be reviewed if other teams decide to come using Absolutely. We went on the last five years, um, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, and um, we just went on the last five years of user groups, and it was just overcomplicated because really they're all local teams, and um, we just went to Lamont price, same price as them, and if they're planning on going up this year, we'll be lower. So, Yeah, I have no problems with, with that. I was just worried about if other users like Fort Saskatchewan, Lamont, Bruderheim, at that rate, that's totally fine. And our kids play in Fort Saskatchewan as well, right? Like it's becoming more regional a lot of our yeah. we don't have teams at every level and they're playing in the fort so yeah, no uh, yeah. that's not what i'm trying to get at i guess my question is is outside i would brew time fort saskatchewan lamont like if strathcona or um redwater or whoever would that be reviewed at that time or would it stay at the 110 i guess well mr mayor will uh, through councillor leco we'll continually monitor and see what our rink looks and again we use the last five years to determine this season schedule yeah. and who our user groups are so yeah no i'm yeah i'm not again there's that i'm not against the price i was just wondering if if that included everybody around so thank you larger centers don't have local and non-local um it we when we were doing our research it looks like more of a rural um reference and to actually look at local kids it would be interesting to see how many kids are actually from the town of Bruderheim that are playing on our Bruderheim teams I would say that just by conversations we probably have a really good strong uh, presence from rural um, Lamont County right so yeah it just becomes and the adult team you know when they brought that to me I thought it was a really good uh, comment that you know who's who's deciding who's a local out of team and who's a who's not. So, thank you for the question, Councilor Wayne. Um, you mentioned that the rates in the region are higher for the minor users and adult users. Can you give us a flavor of like what the number is? Um, the adult users is up around two hundred dollars, and the minor uses is about one fifty five. Okay, thank you. Pardon. Or higher, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then when you say region, that means like Fort Saskatchewan, Strathcona, Lamont. Uh, Redwater, Gibbons, Lamont, Mandara, those areas. Anybody that published, I just kind of went on their websites and looked, and I think I grabbed six or seven of similar size. I didn't really look at the larger municipalities except for Fort Saskatchewan because we do play there, some of our kids, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, the off-season uh, rates, uh, we raised up to $65, which is still, uh, it was, again, I did a regional scan, and the off-season um, is increasing to 45 so that's for nonprofits. And um, the concession I added in there um, is no charge for a nonprofit. And seven hundred and fifty dollars so for a profit organization. So, if Patty and Sherry wanted to run the concession to make money, we would charge them seven hundred fifty dollars a year to make up for that's our equipment and the utilities. And we just wanted to make that clear. Never really been an issue. It's always been run by nonprofits, but we had a couple people approach us for profit organizations that were interested. So it could be something in the future. So we added that in. Um, The community hall and we increased slightly here to account for rising utility costs and again town to equipment being used
Uh, the office rental at the Bruderheim Infinity Business Center, we've lowered to 300. We're no longer offering incubator support. We don't have an economic development officer to support those people. Uh, that was part of his task in the past. So we're just marketing the office space now. And as well, they have to do their own janitorial for that cost. And it's actually a savings to the town because we don't uh, contract out janitorial, which was uh, more savings by doing it this way. A uh, compliance certificate, uh, we actually missed that in the rewrite last year. So um, we added that back in as something we've always done. Um, when somebody buys or sells, they often ask if the uh, property is in compliance with all our local bylaws. And uh, that just was an administrative oversight last year. So it's put back in. Uh, replacement dog tags. Uh, we're gonna upgrade our dog tags. We've had some of our pet families complain about the pet tags are digging in. So. Um, we're going to go to a nicer tag, which means that more costs, which means if you lose it, we're going to charge before they were like 50 cents a tag, and we'll be buying a more expensive dog tag going forward. And that's all the changes we're proposing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. Um, just one thing I wanted to note, I managed to catch the uh, Fort Saskatchewan uh, capital budget discussion online, and the one counselor made the comment that, oh, they pay a lot of money for uh, the right to have uh, dibs on the arena in Bridgerheim. What is the amount that they actually pay per season? Actually, City Force Saskatchewan doesn't pay anything anymore. Well, because it was 5000 wasn't it? It was 25000 before. Yeah, but I, I remember seeing the number 5000 So, Mr. Mayor, they now do advertising in our arena, so, and which amounts to $5,000 a year. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions on the fees and charges information from council? The next step would be uh, calling for a vote then on this. I don't think we have a motion yet for this. Do we? No. Um, maybe I'll uh, call the first someone to make that motion and we can debate some more. Or do you want to have something else to ask Wayne? No? You gonna make the motion? Yeah, I can. The town council give first reading to bylaw 13-2021, a bylaw to impose the user fees and charges for 2022. Thanks for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with this motion? Okay, hearing nothing, um, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to this motion? And the motion's carried. So we can move on now to the Proposed capital budget, 8.4. Mr. Mayor, if I could just, my staff just shared with me, the adult rate used to be 127. Yep. I think you said that, I was just confirming, so. Yep, thank okay. you. Mr. Mayor, if you just give me a minute, I will switch. No problem. Uh, we're, council is all good. We don't need a comfort break yet. Okay, thanks. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, town administration would like to present the recommended 2022 capital budget for council's consideration. First of all, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to talk about what is capital. The capital budget is the financial tool that supports investments, investments in infrastructure, such as facilities, parks, vehicles, roads, water lines, and they are the backbone of every community. Capital is the means by which we provide services to our community. For example, in order to provide recreation services, we require recreation facilities. In order to provide transportation services, we require roads and sidewalks. Capital projects transform and sustain the town of Bruderheim, bringing to life the progressive vision council holds for our community. And Mr. Mayor, anybody could stop me anytime if they needed clarity or questions. Just a little bit about our history. The town plans capital from a multi-year perspective with evidence-based decision-making a key goal for, for process. Mr. Mayor, I thought it might be interesting. Sorry, I can't move this. Um, 
These are the original capital budgets comparison by year. And Mr. Mayor, just a reminder, capital does come back to council a number of times per year. Um, so the last two years, we've been getting extra funding um, through most, if you remember, and um, other grants opportunities. So as we get grants, apply for grants, we'll come back to council if we were successful to amend the capital budget. So these were the original past, which might not be what the final numbers were based on grant funding. Um, so I thought it would be just uh, interesting to um, just look at our trend uh, since 2014. Uh, typically, we like to stack our MSI for two years for capital so that we have close to a million dollars to do projects every second year. Um, that saves on uh, the cost to mobilize. When you have a smaller project, you still pay $50,000 for mobilization, just a general number. So if you have a bigger project, you get more done um, and less administrative costs and mobilization. So as this large number here, 3 million, uh, is when we did the West Woodlands and um, uh, major sidewalk upgrades throughout the community that year. So uh, that's when we took the two million or the million dollar debenture that year. That's why that one's unusually high. But you can see that we've been very low the last few years. And again, uh, with the pandemic, uh, capital was sort of put on hold uh, as we weren't sure if there was even going to be uh, contractors allowed to work here in the community. So, just a financial overview uh, for council and uh, our residents uh, non competitive grants, MSI, and uh, I'll just move this, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Oops. Um, Yeah, I think we do need another board. So non-competitive grants, MSI and uh, the gas tax are expected to continue. Both are being rebranded. So this is something to remember. The local government fiscal framework will be replacing MSI. And those numbers are yet to be determined uh, by our, our government, provincial government. And the Canadian Canada Community Building Fund is uh, CCBF will be replacing the gas tax fund. And that's a federal, uh, that's what you get from the uh, gas pump tax. That's where that goes to. And just to remember that um, the Canada Community Building Fund, I'm still getting used to saying that, um, can only be used for roads, sidewalks, trails, bridges, culverts, uh, can't be used for anything else. And that's why it's the gas tax was called, like you paid at the pumps because you drive and it's everything to do with roads, can only be used for that, nothing else. And uh, something to remember about MSI is you can only use it for projects over 15,000. And um, so unless they change that with the new branding, we haven't heard anything yet. Uh, key decisions through the budget process continue to be important to maintain fiscal uh, sustainability in the future. Go ahead, Councilor Dana. For the, you said for it has to be up to 15,000. That could include like, if you're doing like, it doesn't just have to be like sidewalks or just culverts, it could be combined? Uh, not combined. I'm um, sorry, I don't understand the question. Like, does it specifically just have to be the sidewalks or can you do like sidewalks and bridge, the bridges and stuff that'll equal 15,000? Know what I mean? So the, the MSI is 15,000, the, the fondly known as the gas tax, that doesn't have a limit. So we can do a number of projects, yeah, under that one. MSI is the provincial funding for capital, and it has to be a project that's over 15,000. So when we do sidewalks, we'd make sure they're over 15, or if we did a culvert player, and no, you can't combine, it's separate projects. But if you did a road rehabilitation, that would include the underground, that would be one project. Right, because you're doing the underground and then you have to fix the surface. Of course, that's part of that project. If you replace the sidewalk and say there's a barrier there, uh, like our bridge barrier, if we were to do something there, of course, that would be the same project because you have to disturb that to fix that. So, yeah, you can definitely tag on and be strategic about how you, um, if you were to buy a um, tractor and you wanted to say a lawnmower attachment to it, that would still be one project, right? So, good question, though. No. Yeah. Uh, funding, so building a responsible capital budget involves allocating resources to meet both today's needs and the requirements for long-term financial sustainability. A number of factors must be examined in terms of capital projects. The pressures of infrastructure maintenance, growth in new capital projects must be balanced against impacts of future operating budgets, staff resources, and available funding. 
So again, I don't know if anybody watched the Lamont. Uh, they have a quite a significant um, town council, a significant five-year capital plan. And um, one of the questions one of the councillors asked, like, okay, if we approve this two and a half million, is it even reasonable to get done next year? So that's that's kind of that statement, right? We could say we're going to do $3 million of work, but we actually know that we only have so many months in Alberta to get work done. And depending on what that project is, is it even going to get done that year, right? So those are the things you have to consider. They were great questions. If you have time, you should uh, watch that. It was a really good debate. Uh, the capital budget is tied strongly to financial sustainability as we must have a clear understanding of what our decisions related to capital mean for us today and what it might mean for the town's future state while considering potential opportunities and risks on the horizon. So just types of funding, and again, for the benefit of our uh, newly elected officials and uh, people watching, annual program funding, specific designated reserves have been built over time to ensure secure, sustainable funding for annual programs. These are funded through the operating budget. So if you notice when we presented the operating budget, there's money to transfer to reserves out of certain um, areas. Um, so like in water and sewer, uh, in our, um, our uh, administration, we transfer money into reserves to make sure that annual costs are being replenished. So anything we're taking out, we're putting back into our reserves. Um, grant funding, of course, this is a huge one for our community. We're always looking for those from federal and provincial grants. Grant funds are used prior to municipal funding services sources, except when in relation to annual programs, which require continued and sustained funding. Um, so if we ask for something uh, to be funded by MSI, but then we see a grant, we would go to the grant, right? Because it's um, a very short turnaround time on grants and they're for a very specific purpose. So um, that's why the capital um, budget does come back and forth quite a few times, depending on what we find out there. Uh, reserve funding, uh, that's our municipal reserves and we provide the most flexibility in funding capital projects. All other funding options must be explored for availability and eligibility prior to using this funding source. So this is a really good point. So our, our reserves, uh, if you've had a chance, they were provided in the operating budget. They are designated certain things, but we can always come to council and say, can we do a reserve transfer from this account to that account to fund something? So council has so much flexibility where when you have something that's from the provincial or federal, council doesn't have a lot of say, only if the thing that council would have a say in is uh, if we have to do 25% or a 50% matching fund, but the rules are very clear and there's a lot of work for provincial and federal funding grants. So reserve funding, of course, is your is the most flexible, but the one that you don't want to deplenish for sure, <laughs> the rainy day fund. Um, again, in debenditure financing, I mentioned that with West Woodlands. Uh, we did a significant project there and the council at the time voted to debenture a million dollars. And we used a million from the MSI to uh, do a $2 million upgrade in West Woodlands. <clears throat> it's a financing vehicle to be paid off by various sources, such as developer levies through residential taxes or utility rates, strategic goals, political alignment, and generational equality, equity are all factors in selecting appropriate capital projects to be financed through debentures. And I guess what I say to this is yesterday's residents paid for the water that you have in your house, the sewer, the roads that you're traveling on. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we pay it forward as an oversimplified rate. So we never want to just use our assets and deplete them and not leave anything behind, right? So that's why you look at debenture financing and using your reserve funding if you have to. Funding is allocated in such a way that sources with the most restrictive conditions are used first. For example, government grants restricted to a specific type of project are used to fund those projects ahead of other more generic funding sources. And generational equity, which I just talked about, for projects that create long-term benefits for the community, financing vehicles such as debentures or residential taxes may be used to pay the debt over a lifespan of the asset. So the $2 million or the $1 million that we borrowed for West Woodland is in the operating budget, uh, budget. And you'll see that as debenture payments we pay every year. Uh, it was in the quarterly management report um, that we pay over $100,000 a year in debenture. And that's being paid by today's residents out of the operating budget through taxes. Uh, annual program philosophy, annual rehabilitation replacement programs are used to identify capital assets that require funding and attention. And I think I've uh, shared with council that we're on our asset management journey. 
Uh, right now we're identifying our assets, their value and their replacement lifetime. And uh, hopefully by 2024, we'll have a comprehensive asset management software program. Uh, we're just about captured of all our assets and um, developing a maintenance schedule to sustain those. So to ensure a sustainable future, the first capital consideration is the maintenance of our existing assets. It is imperative to continue with the renewal cycles and annual maintenance based on periodic asset reviews to maintain service levels in the long term and protect the town's investments. So you don't always want to go build the shiny stuff. You need to maintain what we have, right? Otherwise, that will deplete. So I'm going to turn this over to our Director of Infrastructure Services because the capital budget is all about him, not about me. And uh, I will run the slides. If you just want to say next slide, Dennis, I can turn them for you. Okay, sorry about that. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can. Excellent. All right, thanks, Patty. Great, great uh, preempt to the budget. I appreciate that. Um, pretty much, council is on an opportunity to look at this budget. I'm just looking for a motion to approve it. Um, Carl, you want to take it away? <laughs> Sorry, Dennis, you might get a few questions. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go through it then. All right, so this is the uh, recommended 2022 capital budget. And I just, first off, I want to just let all council know that this is an extremely critiqued approach to, uh, to balance a functional town infrastructure in Brudeheim. Um, we have administration, we have broken this down numerous times, looking at uh, the critical paths that are needed to be done. Um, just so that council is aware, there's so much more to be done than what you see here. But this is what, what uh, in my opinion, and, and the engineers we found to be the ones that are standing out. Um, a couple of them need to be done uh, from an environmental standpoint. Um, so we will start with uh, this slide here, which is on this one here. Yep. In oh, can we go back to the previous slide? Thank you. So what we have here is, and Patty uh, alluded to it earlier, was uh, the gas tax fund GTF has been replaced by the Canada Community Building Fund, which is, uh, that's what it's called now. What we've done here is we looked at the bridge repairs on 52nd Avenue. We had a first level assessment done back in September to identify any deficiencies with the bridge. Um, we did find several um, and we determined that the cost would be approximately 30,000. That'll be covered under the CCBF and Dana, uh, Councillor Dana, you had alluded earlier too to what we can use that for. So again, that bridge falls under the CCBF. Um, the West Woodlands Trails, we want to look at upgrading some of them. I believe all the councils aware that we did some uh, drainage issues last year. Um, this year, we'd like to do some more uh, crack filling and some patch repair. So again, that would fall under the CCBF. The big one that stands out this year, um, and for council that was on council back in 014, the majority you were there for those that weren't. Um, it was identified, I believe, back in 2014, we had force main issues. And I'm just going to touch a little bit on what the force main is. The force main sewer, we only have one force main, and that comes from Brookside, and it's pumped all the way to the lagoon area. So the rest of the town being Old Town, Sunset, West Woodlands, and I call it railroad town, the ones that are south to the railroad tracks, that's all gravity feed. Force main means it's being mechanically driven by force to the lagoons. So we have pumps at a lift station in Brookside that force the flow of sewage to the lagoons. That particular 500 meter, currently 500 meters of pipe is, uh, has been temporarily patched. It was brought to council's attention again, I believe in 014. Um, it was patched knowing that we needed to do repairs we can't wait any longer uh we're it's basically a ticking time bomb <clears throat> if that line uh does rupture again it will be a disruption to sanitary sewer systems in brookside as well a very very big cost to the town um so for instance just to give council an example and i just as i said i want to touch on this because it's a big expenditure um if we lose the left station this would have to incorporate having uh, 
vacuum trucks at the lift station to vacuum out sewage until we had the, the line fixed and or go above ground around the repair which would be a, a disruption to uh, the roads and also a very big risk to environmentally to have a rupture on the above ground line. Um, I have done both of those and I can tell you that we need to repair this line because the above ground and the vacuum truck is uh, very very uh, that one there is just cost prohibitive it's it's incredible I, I went through that with the town of Asabasca back in 2000 and uh, I think it was 2007 it was a very high expense at that time so we want to be preemptive we need to do this it's been seven years since council has presented with this um, some of our pre-estimates have been around 375 um, coming forth in the slides, you'll see that these are some measures that we can take to, uh, or so, sorry, some of the different methods we can do to try to repair this. Uh, in the facilities, we have the outdoor rink, which would be some board replacements. I think that uh, specifically- Dennis, do you want questions throughout your presentation or when you're finished this first page or? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I would like to go through the presentation and I would like to, if I could just ask council to take notes and ask me the questions later on, that'd be great. And that way we can get through this uh, um, hopefully in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the outdoor rink, <clears throat> and I'll just uh, allude to uh, Council Aleko and uh, Mr. Mayor. You, the outdoor rink, the boards are, <laughs> they're, they're starting to get uh, very, very fatigued. And this is just a very modest number to replace some of the boards so that we uh, are able to maintain that facility outside. The other big cost is uh, a new loader. I know we've all talked about that. Um, uh, Councillor Campbell has been a very big advocate to ensure that we have the right equipment to do the right job. Um, in this case here, uh, I have been band-aiding, and when I say I, I mean the town has been band-aiding the loader since I've been here and I'm on my fifth year. We can't band-aid it anymore. Um, we have <clears throat> We're, we're throwing money hand over foot in this loader. It's undersized for what we're doing, specifically more now that we're trying to do snow removal at our own costs rather than contract uh, some of the trucking services out. Um, we need to get a bigger loader. This one has outlived its life. And while it still has some value, and when I say value, trade-in value, we need to uh, definitely go ahead and get a new loader. And when I say new, it'll be a newer used loader. Um, they're very, very expensive, brand new. And again, a modest number to get us another loader and be able to move forward with our uh, with what we do with it. Uh, floor cleaner for the arena. <clears throat> this is a very important part. We have had that floor cleaner has been very, very questionable over the last uh, since I've been here. Anyway, it's been questionable, and we need to get a new floor cleaner so that we're not paying so much in labor to clean the floors in the arena. Um, anybody that's been in the arena, I think every uh, counselor that's that's attending tonight has been in the arena. Uh, we cut down our time in half by having a proper floor cleaner, which again would eliminate and reduce the amount of wages we put out. Um, the floor cleaner that's there, my understanding it was purchased back in 2010. It definitely has outlived its life. And we're looking at purchasing a new one at a cost of 15,000. Again, Keeping in, in mind, these costs are all covered under our different uh, formulas of MSI, CCBF, and uh, there are no non-MSI grants here, but so we do have the funds available in MSI and CCBF. And we'll go on to the next slide. So the bridge repairs, um, as I indicated earlier, we did a level one assessment on it. We do have a total of 228,000 $497 currently um, under the CCBF to use. So we've decided to take 30,000 of it and uh, propose this to council that this bridge needs to be repaired in order for it to be functional. Um, again, uh, we are legally required to address all the risks and we have to do regular schedule uh, assessments. And I believe that's every five years. Patty, please correct me if I'm wrong on that one. That's correct, Dennis. Thank you. And uh, so again, we identified this, it wasn't, we didn't put it through on the, uh, in the five-year capital, but we do now need to do this and it has to be done this year because there are some serious risks 
Mr. Mayor, you did identify some of those risks to me back in uh, September, and we addressed what we could with uh, the equipment that we had. But this, some of the repairs that are required are far beyond what Public Works can do and have to be done by professionals. Next slide, please. Uh, lagoon dredging. Um, and again, I'm, I'm alluding to certain councillors here because they had a very big voice back in the day um, when we did this. When we did first lagoon dredging, that was back in 2018, I believe. Um, I think uh, for the councillors that weren't aware, <clears throat> the lagoons had an overabundance of sludge. What sludge is, is it's, it's basically solids that settle out from the, from the uh, sewage. And we hope that the bacteria that is formed within those, those different cells can break it down. And I'm gonna try and put this in layman terms, but uh, a couple of things that were happening to us is that we were unable to break down the BOD and the CBOD. There's two different types of BOD. There's a bio, biochemical oxygen demand, and then there's a carbonaceous bio oxygen demand. Under Canadian law, and a provincial law, we must be able to break those solids down to a certain number. We were unable to do that back in 2018, and it was decided as a, as a reserve transfer to dredge the first two cells, which was cells number one and number two. Knowing back in 2018 that we would have to address cells three and four, as identified back then, that those would be the next cells, but budget restrictions, we, we did what we could. Um, by doing those first two cells, we decreased our our uh, BOD and our TSS, I'll throw this one in here, which is TSS is total suspended solids. That's solids that are held in suspension and not being able to settle out. <clears throat> we reduced those, I believe by 500% after the dredging in the next 2019 year. We have now gone up in BOD and TSS again after this last set of tests and, and release that we did in 2021. And we now need to address cells three and four. Um, I've had a company, which is named Canadian Algae, come out and do an assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we found that cells three and four need to be addressed now with cells uh, five and six, which are flocculative cells, um, will be identified hopefully this next summer. And we'll probably be looking at dredging those by 2024, 2025. Um, for now, though, we need to do the first, uh, or sorry, uh, cells three and four in order to meet the Canadian, uh, uh, Canadian guidelines and uh, be able to reduce our BOD, CBOD and TSS. So those are the numbers that we have to do. This is not a, uh, a, a wish list, this one. This is a requirement under law. We must be able to provide a decent effluent um, because our effluent does discharge back to the North Saskatchewan River. And this is where it becomes a federal issue, not just a provincial. Next slide, please. Um, oh, my apologies. Trail, real bit, trail rehabilitation. Again, I just I discussed that earlier. There are some areas that we would like to address, do some crack filling. Some There's a few areas that we want to replace. Um, we did uh, the storm water management uh, in that area this uh, late in the summer. Um, Councillor Oletko, and uh, I think you can admit, because you were the one that brought that up, that's done a very good job by putting that, that uh, culvert in there. So these are just things, upkeep that we need to do. Again, falls under the CCBF, which we do have a lot of dollars uh, sitting in a, in a reserve fund for that. Next slide, please. Again, we talked about the infrastructure force main line pipe bursting replacement. There are two methods of doing this. Um, both are within reason comparable costs. The first one, um, which is becoming, well, it's not becoming, it's, it's just, well, yeah, it is becoming it, more and more you know, municipalities are going to the pipe bursting rather than the lining lining of a reed pipe. Pipe bursting is where you drive a, a head into a line and you can see in the picture, it bursts the clay tile out and you're usually pulling a, a new plastic and we'll call it HDPE or perhaps a, a balance picket. You'll be pulling something else through without interfering with the ground. So there's less less uh, interference with the ground, not having to cut open the, uh, the uh, asphalt and uh, you have a path to, to follow. Pipe relining is like taking a big sleeve. It's, it's a fiberglass resin. It's 
goes in on the inside of the clay pipe and it's pulled through, pulled, pulled through. And with the section that we're talking about, we only have four, I believe it was four services that we have to dig open on 52nd because of course we have to reopen the laterals, which are the services going to each service. So there's a number of houses or number of houses and commercial businesses that we'd have to dig open the 52nd, which we call a bell and have to cut open and make that service available on either a, whether we do a, a pipe burst or a relining. Um, I'm going to ask for pricing from engineering on both, but this is just a preliminary estimates of 375 to do this job. Again, I can't stress that this is something that cannot wait. If it fails, which I do believe it will within the next year or two, it will definitely put uh, Bruderheim in a bad position, not only financially, but environmentally. So we don't want to cross that bridge. Next slide, please. Outdoor rink, again, I, I mentioned uh, there's some boards that need to be replaced. This is a very conservative number. Um, you know, ox, the sun has done a, a, a lot of damage to these boards. There's heat on it all summer, et cetera, et cetera. So they become fatigued, brittle. Um, I've done what I can uh, trying to replace what we have, but there are some bigger costs to replace actual sections of the boards and uh, get that done right so that uh, people are, that are playing shitty hockey perhaps are not catching their clothing on some of the uh, outlying borders. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the loader, as I discussed, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is something that has definitely uh, served the town well, that has definitely outgrown the town. Um, it's too small. Um, it's definitely not made for our application, especially for the snow removal. Um, the skidster has definitely been a, a great supplement for this loader, which is why we bought the skidster. Um, so it's time now to move up to a bigger loader as this one has been, as I said, I've spent uh, uh, a lot of money trying to keep this thing running. And while there is some value in this still, I'd like to uh, get a trade in on it or perhaps even sell it separately. But we will be looking at approximately 125000 to get into a bigger loader, one that suits the town's needs um, and go from there. So next slide, please. So the floor cleaner, as I indicated earlier, um, this is something that is uh, required at the arena. It keeps our labor costs down uh, while it still enhances our cleaning ability in the arena. Um, the one that we have now is, it's definitely, it's done. It's, uh, we use it when we can get it charged up and get the parts for it. We try to use it. It is semi-functional right now, but it's not serving the purpose. And we were spending a lot of man hours trying to clean the floors. So this is something that uh, has been on the radar for a number of years, and we felt it was time to bring it forward and get a new uh, floor cleaner. So next slide, please. So in summary, our focus on 2022, as I said, this is a very critiqued uh, uh, budget that we looked at. We wanna be planned for maintenance and life cycle repair, one time and emergent maintenance and repairs, rehabilitation, revitalization, planning and design of future assets, and the creation, purchase, and construction of new assets. The challenges that we've had is, again, as I said, with the loader band-aiding it to death, is maintaining current infrastructure, balancing capital needs for today and the future, and accommodating for growth and core service infrastructure, while we still invest in infrastructure for community growth. And on that note, I would leave the floor open to council for any questions. Councillor Dana has your hand up first. Uh, in regards to your quotes that you have there for like the pipe repair and all that, how, when did you get those quotes done? Like how, has it been recent that you got the pricing on all this stuff or? Mr. Mayor, through to, to Councillor Dana. So what we do is we go out to our engineers and we get a comparable price of what was being done in other towns and how it was bid out. And we use that number and that's the only number that we can use. So for instance, if the, and I'm just using this as an example, if the town of Mundare um, had 500 meters or 200 meters, we look at how much was it a meter to do that relining and or pipe bursting, we factor that number in and that's the number we use for an estimate. Go ahead, go ahead Dana. So do you, you go off of like, 
if they did it two years ago, that's the pricing that you're going off of? Like if they did a repair two years ago? No, we looked at it from the prior, from the most recent uh, pipe relining is done every year in a number of municipalities in the province. The only reason I ask is just because of price increase and stuff, right? So if you're looking at getting for us to approve it, I would double check to make sure. So if we're approving 375,000 and then it ends up, you know, the prices went up and it's gonna be 500, it'd just be something to look into. So Mr. Mayor, if I can, through Councillor Jacobs, so we can't put things out to bid or to request for quotes until they've been approved by council. And so what happens is something this large will have to go out for tender, right? Uh, 375,000. If we get the quotes back, request for proposals back and they're higher, then we would bring it back to council. Yeah, we can't spend any money if it's not on there. So what we do is uh, like, um, Dennis said as we go out in the region, we see what people have paid this past season on these kind of projects. And then we add the consumer price index, which we think is, but we all know that next year they're projecting some significant increases. That's a great point because it really is a crystal ball what's gonna be out there. Thanks for the questions, Councillor Jacobs. Councillor Aleko and then Councillor George. Um, just in regards to the West Woodland Trails, what have, I guess, what kind of costs have we put into them in the last five years or so? Do you know? Well, um, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Letko, I would say conservatively, we've probably maintained around that two to 3,000. Um, I think you, most of the council can see we did some crack filling last year. Um, again, we did some repairs back in uh, 017. We did a big patch on the southeast side of that, uh, of the walking trails. So, I, what we're doing is we're maintaining. Um, are we improving? I would say no. Are we maintaining? I would say yes. Um, Does that answer your question, Councillor Letko? I'm trying to be really. Yeah, I'm trying to be transparent because I don't want to give a false, a false feeling that these walking trails are in excellent shape and everything else because they aren't but can we maintain what we have with that amount of money? Yes. Um, can we make it look better with more money and improve it a great deal? Yes, but I don't think that's, uh, in my opinion, the, the infrastructure that's required this year, that's just to maintain it. And something to look at certainly in future years is to improve the walking trails uh, much more than what we have been. Yeah, I was just kind of curious how much we're putting into it each year just to, get a ballpark to maintain them as well. Sure. Um, sorry. Patty, would it be able to, would I be able to see council in a bigger picture here? Cause I can't see who really, who I'm, who I'm talking to, if that's possible or do you want to keep that slide up? Perfect, thank you. Um, And the outdoor rink, when you're, you're doing bore replacements, how is the rest of the stuff, the, the lights, the speakers, is any of that? I know the speakers have been <laughs> obsolete for a while, and it's not an important thing. I was just curious as to where that kind of stuff is at. Mr. Mayor, through the Council of Letco, the lighting is great. Uh, I don't think we've had any problems with the lighting. The aluminum framing, um, public works themselves in-house, we've done most of the work. Uh, last year, we did a lot of re reinforcing. Um, it's just some of the boards, they're, they're, they're getting fatigued. As you can see, we've got some patches of orange here, orange there, you know, aesthetically, it doesn't look the greatest, but it also, the functionality is not the greatest. So I thought, you know what, I did some pricing on sheets of, uh, like we're not resheating the whole outdoor rink, just I don't want anybody to be misled with that, but we're going to replace the ones that are very fatigued and the ones that have been broken and just get it back to a, a better functionality and, and just present a better aesthetic. Okay, well, oh, thank you. Um, and the old loader, what kind of value do you think it has as it sits? Well, that's Mr. Mayor, the council for electrical, that's a wild card. I've been all over the map. I've talked to so many vendors here. Um, I think our worst case scenario is 40, our best case scenario is 70. Oh, okay. Um, and just because I, I don't know this lagoon dredging, this 80,000 is to actually hire somebody to bring the equipment and do the work. We're not purchasing equipment, right? Or is that is it? correct. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, so if council remembers, uh, sorry, uh, I apologize. 
prior council remembers and the new council, we, they bring in a dredging machine, we dewater all the solids. Those solids are kept on our property, on our lands. And once they have uh, dried, we level them out because it's within the lagoon area. And we just fill in low spots within the lagoon area, which is acceptable through Alberta environment. There's one more question. In regards to the loader, it says that we have to pay out the current adventure. So we just, it's the one, like we have to pay the full, is there a fee to pay it out, right? So Mr. Mayor, we uh, post this question to the uh, Alberta Capital, it's not called that anymore, sorry, but our lending institution. Um, yeah, and that's approximately the best guess they gave us. It depends on interest rates and, and uh, such. And just as a reminder to council, it's in the notes, but we currently pay the loader debenture with reserves anyway. So we would just be paying it ahead of time. Every year we take it from reserves. So the thirty thousand dollars, the thirty thousand dollars is whatever is outstanding plus whatever they're charging to. Okay, and it all comes from reserves. Okay, and we don't have an option if we sell the equipment; we have to pay it out. Okay. No, thank you. I think that was all. Thank you. Now, Councillor George and Councillor Len. Let's start off with the bridge. In our budget, I don't see any mention of safety items being listed in as far as uh, upgrade to the present uh, railing across there. Uh, is, is there going to be any extension of height in that? Uh, access down to the bottom of that bridge, is it going to be anything there to deter entry as uh, I've seen in many seasons of my time here? where children have been playing in that area uh, during uh, 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 spring runoff. Um, if we're going to do this work, we have to maybe look at some of the safety aspects. Is there that built into this budget also? So I'll take this one. Mr. Mayor, as council knows, I provided the business case justification. And so you'll see on there, replace damaged approach rail, reset to proper height, because it is too low. Yeah. That's all in this and attached to bridge rail, extend the ACP to the curb and um, train, uh, treat and ban the split piles. So that's all safety all issues. Part. Yes. The only actual structural is the uh, grout lifting and the coring and grinding um, needed in the bottom. Okay. Our dredging, uh, we're talking about three and four cells. Um, what's the lifetime span now of uh, one and two? Uh, how long have we got with them uh, condition-wise? Um, are they going? Uh, is there a possibility of them spilling over solids into three and four right away? Should we not be looking? Maybe if it's if that's a possibility, we should be not looking at one and two as well. Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor Campbell, so back in 2018, we did cells one and two. We did both those cells, so they were dredged. The life expectancy of those cells are all dependent and based on how they're maintained and managed. Um, if, and again, I ask for your indulgence for a minute. If you remember, we went through, uh, through different treatments of those cells after they were done, and we've been maintaining, knowing that we had issues with cells three and four back in 2018, that they would have to be addressed in the coming years. Um, so we are using treatment systems that are maintaining one and two. We would expect a 20 to 25 year lifespan after one and two, which we just did the, uh, the research on that in the fall on those cells. And they're looking very, very good with the exception of our non-flushable wipes, which are creating a little bit of a problem with those cells, but they float on top. Um, so when it comes to, uh, actual sludge cells three and four are the ones that need to be addressed one and two have already been addressed uh, three years ago and now five and six what's the condition of them they are sitting at i believe and please don't quote me i think it was at 22 percent which is well below the normal um so again i i think i, I mentioned earlier uh, back we would be in about 2024 perhaps 2025 we would be looking at dredging those ones the dredging of the cells five and six are different than one, two, three, and four. Um, 
So one, two, three, and four have more sludge because that's the front end of the most of the cells. Right. And then when we get into the flocculative cells, which is five and six, yeah. we're taking and we're taking a anaerobic bacteria and turning it into an aerobic, which means we're taking a non-oxygen bacteria and making it into an oxygenated bacteria in cells five and six. Less sludge, so but finer. So we need to we do need to get rid of it because our bacteria, as I think I used in an example a few years ago, um, we have more sludge than, than what the, the current bacteria can consume. So it would be like taking 10 pizzas and shoving them down your throat and say, you're going to eat them all, but you can't because we don't have enough bacteria because the sludge is consuming that oxygen. Hey, uh, does that answer your question, Councillor Campbell? Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with your presentation on the forced main pipeline and the uh, the insert application. Uh, if I was to uh, to look at this, uh, I would be uh, looking at a method like that, cost wise, as far as um, uh, not having to rip up the uh, the uh, pavement, uh, disrupting services on our on 52nd Avenue, which is a major, major trunk line into town. Uh, that would be the, uh, my way of, uh, of, of applying a fix for that. You have a little bit of a discrepancy on your uh, on your uh, cost for your uh, trail rehabilitation. One place you say five thousand, another place you pay three hundred seventy-five thousand. <laughs> well, it'd be nice to have three hundred seventy-five thousand for the trail, but I don't think that's a reality. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's in the briefs. <laughs> well, my apologies if that's in there. So it's a typo. And that's your questions, Councilor George. No, I'm not finished yet. Now we're going to the wheel loader. As you said, I've been an advocate for better equipment for a long time, but I want to buy equipment that is going to be serviceable for this town, not today, not tomorrow, but in the future. If this town grows, we have to have equipment that's going to do the job. Uh, we've uh, lived with a spoon, a, a teaspoon long enough. It's time to get a a real boy to do the work. Now, are you looking at a piece of equipment that we can attach a blower system to? We can put a blade on it and replace, if we have to, the uh, loader. Yep. Uh, not the not the loader, but the uh, grader. Um, I see in the future that's the method that we should be going with. Uh, instead of the grader, we should be going with. Uh, loaders with uh, with the blowers and the blades for snow removal. More practical, easier to get into the cul-de-sacs. Um, if we're going to invest, we may as well invest and do it properly. Um, I don't know what you can get for three hundred and for one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars if you take the the uh, cost, capital cost out of reserves, plus the sale of the uh, the old uh, loader. But uh, we should be looking at something like a 966 or bigger. Um, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Campbell, if I, if I may, I think Patty mentioned it earlier. This is a, an estimate that we came up with. If we can't find what fits, fits what we feel will, will work with the town, Certainly, we'll be coming back to council with a with a, a proposed different number if we cannot find it for that number. Yeah, because there's no point in going and buying something that is not going to fit our present situation. We're better to keep off of what we got until we can get the proper equipment. And uh, and uh, just because we want it, we should be looking at what we need not now but in the future. Uh, I've always advocated that. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, just a reminder, we have a huge rural component road network. I don't think the town would ever be without a greater. Well, 
it's it's something though that to look at. Um, that's all I have. Thanks, Councillor George. Councillor Len. Well, uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I see the word here, bottom line. Now, what this capital budget, what will it do to our taxes? How much it's going to increase it? How is it going to keep it balanced? Or is that funding already in place? Administration. Mr. Mayor, uh, in the presentation that uh, I was uh, flipping the slides, it shows on um, each item that's funded and there's zero impact tax dollars. Uh, it's all funded by either grants or reserves. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, anyone else from council with questions? Okay, um, I have a couple of questions. And if we just back up to the first slide, uh, you don't have to put it on the screen. Which items were moved forward from their original dates in the capital plan, like the five-year plan? Mr. Mayor, the only one was the uh, loader. No, it was the force main line rate. Uh, it was scheduled for 2024. It's again on the slides. Um, the last bullet says uh, approved in principle, so the force main for the 2024 capital work. All the rest were approved for the 2022, except for the unforeseen bridge repairs. Okay, so um, the floor cleaner was also yeah. slotted for this year. So what I'm getting at is, by pushing that one ahead, what's that gonna do to the impact for the five-year plan going forward? So Mr. Mayor, we will be reviewing the uh, five-year plan when we do our final budget in the spring, but we don't see that as an impact. Okay, um, just a couple of questions. So um, the repairs on the force main was engineering recommendation. Like you were saying, there's options for council. Uh, I wouldn't leave it to council to make those calls. I would want an engineer to tell us which way to go with that. And hopefully we get a good recommendation from an engineer. Um, if it was imminent to fail this year, why didn't we do it? Or I mean, in 2022, why didn't we do it this year, that force main? So Mr. Mayor, if you remember back in 2014, we had a master services uh, overview that I could provide to councillors if they haven't seen it. And the recommendation was about 10 year lifespan, but we have, uh, that's why it was budgeted for 2022. And previous, we've been actually fairly lucky um, in the last five years, but uh, I think my first year here, 2015, I believe there was a major break. And when uh, Public Works dug it up, it just crumbled and they had to actually dig it back farther to find anything they could do the repair on. So um, that master service plan review did give us about 10 years. Yep, I, I, I recall And if that. you remember, they actually suggested for us to buy property that went right from Brookside uh, straight over to the Seuss Lagoons. So we would also have to buy the property to do uh, a new force main line. And, um, and this technology wasn't, around, wasn't proven back then when that, um, but it has been proven since then for sure. Okay, and so um, uh, on that uh, force main, it's one solid pipe all the way to the lagoon or is there uh, a, a sump somewhere in between or anything like that? I'm just wondering that plan for relining it uh, as uh, engineering given their blessing to that? Mr. Mayor, so currently, currently the force main turns into a gravity main because of the disruption in the pipe. So because the pipe's broken, and, and to give, I got to give council a little bit of a visual. If you can imagine 52nd, it is full of infrastructure on top of water. Uh, there's two sanitary sewer lines, two water lines, an immense amount of, of uh, talus and fiber optics. Um, so at the time that the line failed, that force main up into by the trailer park, if, if everybody knows where the trailer park is, it was forced it was pumped it's now being pumped into the gravity uh sewer um through the uh, manhole it's pumped into that manhole and now gravity driven back down so it's force main up to that manhole and gravity back down using the existing gravity sewer main that runs down that way because we have two we have two lines that run down there so the only way to get that sanitary sewer to the lagoon was tie into the gravity which is not the right way whatsoever um it's actually that that manhole is actually starting to fatigue. So we have to address this. It's a force main for issue for a reason because it's mechanically driven. So there will be some disruption to the road then? There will definitely be disruption to the road when, if you recall back in my earlier statements, 
when we tie in the services, we have no choice. We have to open up those people that are tied onto that line. But we're talking about small bells versus uh, a huge amount of the road uh, being taken out. I, I just wanted to have a visual there so we understand that. And so you mentioned that there'll be, uh, when that is being relined, that uh, users on the system will have to be shut down then totally? Or how is that going to work? So when the relining goes in, Mr. Mayor, when the relining goes in, it takes approximately eight to 10 hours to cure. Um, we asked residents at that time, I just did this in another town I came from, um, they were asked to keep their no flow, no nothing for approximately eight hours. So don't flush your toilets, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It was never an issue. Um, most people work during the day. Um, and those that don't, we made accommodations for. So we would uh, definitely make make some sort of an accommodation to make sure they can get through the day. Yep. And um, don't take my questions wrong way. I, uh, I get very focused on Everybody. things and uh, I think you did a great job bringing this forward. But I, I, like I said, I do have some questions. So um, on the loader, um, I'm wondering <clears throat> a couple of things. So the loader, we still have money left owing on it. And currently it is working and functioning and, and doing the job. Well, we're, you used it today, right? Nope, it broke down today. Uh, I'm going, so, I'm going what, to... what what are the what have been the repair costs for the past year? Then, if it's breaking down so much, probably around ten thousand dollars. If I had to take a wild guess, it's been uh, it's been it's been a struggle. And 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 again, I I'm going to go back to my earlier statements: is that uh, uh, we're trying to do as much as we can in house, and by doing that, we're using our equipment much more than we were before um and i'm going to go into this next one is that uh, for instance our tandem our tandem has been hauling snow instead of contracting trucks our tandem has been hauling snow continuously for the last two weeks and we had a breakdown on it today because it's been used more and more um you know at some point in time this is equipment that council will be brought you'll you'll we'll bring it to your attention of equipment going forward that needs to be replaced but um, again, Councillor Campbell said it in his statements is that we need to look at tomorrow, not today, because today we're repairing and, and putting money out that we have no return on. We need to get something bigger and more um, agile mm -hmm. so that we can be able to keep these costs in house and not have to contract out. I think all of council can agree that you've seen big loaders that have contracted in the big snowfalls. Well, that, that loader is $200 an hour, and that adds up very, very quickly in a big snowfall. Where if we, and I'm not suggesting that we need something that big. What I'm saying is we need to keep our costs in-house to keep taxes down. And I think in the last two weeks, we've shown that we were able to do that. And this is why we need to look at some other equipment because we cannot keep fixing and throwing money hand over foot on some of this existing equipment that we have. Yeah, no, I understand that. I just, um, it, it bothers me that we're spending money to, uh, pay something off then when and, and it, like what you, you want to be able to pay it off and still have something and um it, that's the uh, the crux of it for me and that and it was uh, this was a uh, purchase under recommendation from administration so um wouldn't it be prudent to maybe get it to stretch another year and you have some more money and then you can get the real machine that we need no so we are that, that machine has met its lifespan, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, the hours on the motor alone, um, we are now playing Russian relay. So uh, I've talked to uh, CAP themselves and you know, with them giving some of the numbers on a trade-in value, um, it's been very fair. And as you all know, uh, everything's hard to come by. New equipment right now, you, you can't find it. So the used equipment's got a good dollar value attached to it. Um, so this is where we do stand to be in a better position to, to uh, trade that in and or sell it privately. Um, I understand, Mr. Mayor, your concerns, but obviously where I'm sitting is I'm spending a lot of money on labor, uh, on top of contracting fees to fix this stuff and time. I mean, we are, we are, you know, for the last two weeks, we've been doing snow removal on small pieces of equipment. It's very difficult to do and still be able to manage the day-to-day -day items that council and this town uh, expects us to do. Um, if we go to the um, bridge now, what is a level one assessment? What does that mean? 
Patty, do you want to take this? You want me to take this? You, you call it. Okay, I guess I'll take it. So level one assessment is everything on top. So uh, um, it's looking at the structure, doing uh, engineered shots, taking a look at the beams, uh, the sub beams, um, what sort of integrity, safety, uh, Councillor Campbell brought that up earlier. Uh, the rails are one of the things that need to be replaced. Um, so it's everything, it's, 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 a, it's a good look at what we have um, structurally. A level two assessment um, would involve more soil sampling. What do we have down below? What's holding those, those structures together? Um, but talking to the individuals that did that, uh, that level one assessment, they don't see any sort of erosion other than the typical drainage from stormwater um, that would impede on some of those structural events that we see. So they're suggesting that what their suggestions or recommendations were a dollar amount, which was an amount of 30,000, will put that bridge back to a passing assessment, which is what's required under law. So Thanks. Mr. Mayor, just for a point of clarity, um, divers are usually involved in level two. So if the level one assessment shows stress, or so some sort of abnormal wear and tear, they will order a level two assessment, which would be divers and like Dennis said, soil testing, they'll look at the foundation more of a more thorough, but the level one assessment always uh, indicates if there's more issues to deal with. Okay, so then going forward, uh, we're good for a number of years before we need to do any more repairs after 2022? Well, Mr. Mayor, the minimum is every five years. So after these upgrades, uh, they will give us another assessment because uh, now they're there doing all these things. And that would indicate to us if they recommend that we do another assessment in two years or three or four, and we follow that recommendation. Okay, thanks. And uh, on a number of items, it was mentioned that we've done uh, like trail repairs and outdoor rink repairs. M maybe we need to be putting a little bit of money into the budget every year for these items rather than catching up after a number of years and not putting money into the budget. Does that make sense? Uh, trail yeah, repairs is only 5,000. So that, yeah, it's a capital item. So we can fund it with the gas tax. So it's very specific. Um, has to go through the capital to, to access that funding as well as the um, bridge as well, right? So. Yep. And the, the last thing I wanted to ask is about the floor cleaner. Um, $15,000 is a lot of labor. Um, I know that uh, from users in the arena, one of the things that gets asked regularly is the ventilation issues in the arena. And from that perspective, um, I think that would be a higher priority than the floor cleaner. I, I don't remember what the cost was to get the ventilation repaired, but um, I, I know that every time I go into the arena, I'm reminded about the ventilation issues. Mr. Mayor, absolutely I understand your concerns, and we are working on that issue uh, currently. I do. I think I brought up to uh, Council earlier that we may have a, a, an alternative for some of that recycling of the air, or call it return air. Um, I, I, let me just. Uh, touch a little bit more about what this floor cleaner does. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands this floor cleaner doesn't just scrub, wash and it goes away. If you look at our floor tile in the arena, we have cracks, like they're, they're all squares, right? They're laid down, it's not one solid piece. This is, the floor cleaner is also a vacuum. So it draws the solids out from those cracks and from areas that we can't get with a mop. So there is another method or another reason for having this unit there and other reasons why other facilities have this. Um, where I totally understand, uh, Mr. Mayor, your concerns with the return air, um, that is being addressed uh, right now. Um, it has been over the last few weeks. We may have an alternative for a much lower cost, which I believe was around that 35000 to replace that uh, makeup air unit um, that was has been down for a number of years. It was deemed uh, um, unfit a, a number of years ago. So uh, they're both equally important. Um, we're not starving for heat in the building. Um, Yes, return air is, is good, but uh, we equally we need to maintain our buildings, and that uh, floor that's where that floor scrubber comes in, is being able to maintain what we have. And Mr. Mayor, if I should, can add, there's a number of grants coming out for green initiatives, and so we're looking at all our HVAC systems and uh, heating and cooling systems and ventilating systems. And Dennis and me are putting together quotes to apply for those grants. There's a number of initiatives coming out. 
Okay, yeah, I just wanted to voice that concern because it's been come up a number of times over the years. So, and I believe uh, Deputy Mayor Judy had some questions. So going back to your forced um, main there, Dennis, you said it's a forced main and it goes into a gravity system. When you put in the new one, will it be a forced main consistently or still it'll be forced main back to consistently then? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, through the Council Schuler, all the way to the lagoon. So we'll get rid of the temporary connection. We'll call it temporary because that's what it was a number of years ago. Yeah. Was something that's where it's now going to be a direct line all the way back, which was intended for it to begin with. Okay, and that's all I have. Good presentation. I like it. I see it's all uh, allocated to MSI or uh, at gas tax or uh, coming from reserves where you would put money. So I think that's good. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor George. Getting back to the loader and uh, paying off the uh, adventure of $30,000. If we keep what, where we are, we're going to be still paying that payment on top on top of all the maintenance and service charges for that loader. Um, I don't see a saving at all in that reasoning. Uh, one, there is no saving there. Um, uh, I st strongly recommend that we go along with uh, Dennis's presentation and uh, uh, per, uh, go ahead and purchase a new loader. Thank you, Councillor George. Um, something else I wanted. Oh, in regards to the floor cleaner, uh, we have to look at the, the type of floor cleaner and the type of floor that we have there. As Dennis mentioned, this floor cleaner is designed to remove the, the uh, solids out of the cracks. There is a, in those cracks, there is bacteria buildup, there is germs. It's more of a sanitation cleaning than just a cleaning. Thank you, Councillor George. Anything else? And just turn your mic off there. Any other questions from Council on the capital budget? Um, one question on the uh, force main repair. What kind of lifespan can we expect out of that repair? Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, if we go back to uh, historically, um, <laughs> when they're using clay tile, which is what's, what, what's in a lot of our gravity now, it was always expected lifespan of 25 years. That's what they based it on. Some of our clay tile in our, our town right currently is over 50 years. So everything's based at a 25 to 30 year lifespan. Um, so, I can safely assume that none of us will be around to see that. So uh, we're good for at least 25 years is what the, that's the, that's the norm. Okay, because it's under pressure, it won't be just a draining. Uh, so any other questions from council? Mr. Mayor, if, I, I just wanna add, I don't wanna provide any false illusion to the force main. Um, that force main is much longer than 500 meters. We're talking about a section of force main that's strictly on 52nd. That force main stretches from Brookside all the way up 40, uh, Highway 45 or, or 205 or 204, down 52nd and all the way to the lagoon. We're only touching 20% of that whole force main, if that. So I don't want to provide that this force main's all perfect and we're never going to run into issues again, because that wouldn't be to, 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 that wouldn't be true. I'm trying to fix what we identified, or sorry, what was identified a number of years ago that does need to be resolved now in order to get through and see what else has to happen over the next number of years. So I think this is gonna be an ongoing process for the next you know, 10 to 15 years is try to resolve some of those um, fatigued areas so that they don't become a problem in the future. Yeah, so then in future capital plans, we'll see more of the force main repairs. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. I don't think we have a motion, so would someone be willing to, Deputy Mayor? I make a motion that Town Council accept the proposed 2022 capital. Pardon me? I didn't get that far yet. <laughs> 2022 capital budget is information. Thank you for that motion to accept the capital budget as information. 
Any more comments, questions, or concerns from council? I know there was a lot of questions for you, Dennis, but uh, it's a lot of money and uh, we have to be careful with every dollar and cent because it, like you talked about, CAO Patty has an impact going forward in the future. So uh, behooves us to make sure that we're uh, questioning every dollar that's spent. So thank you for that, uh, Deputy Mayor. And I like your case budgets that you put down telling us specifically what you were doing and how much it cost and where all that. I, I like that. It made more sense that way. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from council? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the capital budget as information motion? Hearing none, that's carried. And we move on to reports now, council committee reports. So we'll start with a motion for accepting or receiving the council committee reports as information. Would someone be willing to make that motion? Deputy Mayor? I make a motion that council receive the council committee reports as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none and call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion to receive the council committee reports? And the motion's carried. Uh, looking for someone to make a motion to receive the mayor report as information. Councillor Ashley? I motion that council receive the mayor report as information. Thank you, Councillor Ashley. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that? I just wanted to uh, let folks know that uh, when I attended the um, AUMA, the uh, uh, events that I attended were ex uh, advocating for small communities in a big world. What does your association do for you? And I found out a few things about the AUMA that I didn't know and afforded the, uh, every presentation I went to afforded that information to council. Also went to climate change and municipalities, how to save the world one emission at a time event. And all of the information that was presented um, and more is in this booklet if anybody is interested in seeing this. So any other comments, questions or concerns with the mayor report? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion to receive the mayor report as information? And that motion's carried. Now we're looking for a motion for the CAO report. And Deputy Mayor. I make a motion that council receive the chief administration officer report as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns on that, uh, Councillor George and then Councillor Wayne. Councillor George, please turn your mic on. Can you give us a brief uh, overview of the resilient rurals, the uh, communications I've seen, what's with them? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, the scope of the project or what exactly yeah, the they're working? The, yeah. well, com uh, communications uh, toolkit development, uh, vulnerable pro populations program development, so Mr. Mayor, just to remind council, we were fortunate enough to um, get two university students to help us um, for no cost to the municipality. And they're working on the Resilient Rules, which is that initiative between Gibbons, Bruderheim and Lamont, which we received funding for. Mm -hmm. And they're assisting Jill in coming up with some real deliverables to take away for each community. So uh, working with Lamont, Bruderheim and Gibbons. And I uh, believe they'll be coming with updates in the new year, first quarter, and um, giving council, just each council, three different councils. So uh, those two young ladies are amazing. They're environmentalist specialists and, uh, coming in, um, talking to us about emergency management and infrastructure, climate resilient infrastructure, and doing a really good job of uh, tying that all together for us. And us three communities are very similar in our concerns and what we have for resources. And so, yeah, super excited that we're actually gonna get some deliverables from the project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor George. Any other questions? Please turn your mic off, Councillor George. And then I believe Councillor Wayne. Um, talks back to me. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks for following with Fortis. I'm sure it was not an easy task to get them to come out, but I see a lot of light standards are up and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, question in regards to, um, 
water meters, if I may ask a question about a residential. Um, if their resident wants to check pressure of their water in their house, are they able to disconnect to test pressure or is that have to be done by a plumber or yourselves or who, how does that work? Mr. Mayor, through the Council of Electrical, so they can hire a plumber. They have to isolate. Every, every residential home or commercial business has an isolation valve located prior to the meter. They would have to isolate that valve and what they do after that valve or what they do after that meter is it's your home, you do what you want. It's our meter. So uh, you can put, you can do whatever you want, but it would have to be isolated first. And that's something the homeowner would do, not the town. Yeah. So they can disconnect from prior to, or prior to the meter to test, but it has to be after. It has to be after the meter. Okay. You can do that uh, test by just putting a pressure gauge on your outside water tap. Yes, you could. You could just tie into a hose bib, Councillor Campbell. So, yeah. Um, are, are there some concerns, Councillor Lecko? There was a, there was a resident that brought that question up, so I can touch base with you later on that if you'd like. Just to... sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the other question I was posed is, what happening with residents uh, when they identified shutoff valves? Um, there were residents that there were not identified. Is that because there are none, or they couldn't find? Mr. Mayor, through the Council of Electrical, are you referring to curb clocks? Like sorry, yes, sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, yes. So some of them we identified were buried under, we presume are buried underneath some uh, sidewalks that were poured after the fact and or landscaping material that's covered it that we were unable to find due to uh, one instance is um, uh, huge uh, landscape rocks um, that we just couldn't move. So we have a pretty good idea where they are. And we've identified to the homeowner that they would be uh, at risk cost-wise if we had removed that material. Um, again, it's in our bylaw that if you pour over a CC in a driveway or a sidewalk, it's at the homeowner's expense if we have to expose it. So if it can't be found, it's going to be it's got to be there somewhere. Basically, is what you're saying. Absolutely, every every residence or commercial property in this town has a, a CC. Okay. Um, and just because I like the arena so much. Um, no <laughs> the zamboni what kind of a life expectancy do we have on the zambonis because i there's repairs repairs of it is that something that's gonna be looked at soon or is that is this an, a regular cost? again if you look it, it, mr mayor through the council echo if you look at our capital budget or our uh, long-term five-year capital budget you'll see that, that i believe the olympia is in there i uh, will you the olympia is itself not the zamboni the olympia is in there in 20 26, I think, uh, Patty, you will have to correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember if we put it in there. I think so. So every piece of equipment has a life expectancy. The Olympia has given us a little bit of grief this year. Um, again, um, like all equipment, it's getting older and it needs a little more attention. Am I suggesting that the Olympia has to go? No, it's something that's on our radar. Um, the Zamboni, uh, which is our oldest one, that's our outdoor rink one. We've maintained that very, very well um, in the past and in the in the present. I think we have that one can last for quite some time. It is an outdoor rink Zamboni. Um, so I think that is fair to say that that one will last us for a number of years to come because we have invested some dollars into it um, and the right dollars and the right amount of maintenance. And knowing, knowing where that Zamboni came from, it was maintained extremely well. So you're pretty comfortable saying we're covered for the next four to five years then? Reasonably, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Any other questions for CAO Pat from her report? Um, we have a motion for, I think we had, didn't we? Yeah, okay. Um, so call for a vote then, anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Would uh, someone be willing to make a motion for a cup or break for five minutes? Deputy Mayor? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so and maybe a motion then to close the open session? Make a motion that we go into closed session. Uh, according to the Municipal Government Act, RSA. 2000, Chapter M26, wipe Section 21, harmful to intergovernmental relation, intermunicipal agreement, 
Strathcona County in Bruderheim. I have to read the last one too. Thank you. Thank you for that motion, Deputy Mayor. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion to go out of the public session? Hearing none, then call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So um, we're gonna close off the Facebook then.